there. So today I'm going to be sculpting a face, a fairy face, and I just wanted to show you this um, armature that I created for underneath, and it has more of a skull shape to it, and I've kind of indented where I want to be able to add in those eyes. So what I'm going to be doing next is just adding clay to it. Um, first I wanted to explain, I have this part on the back and I've already baked this, so this is hard as a rock and that gives me something to hold on to and it kind of helps the, the head keep its shape. So next I'll be adding clay and adding in the eyes. Now most of this video is just going to have me voicing over later, so I'm just going to kind of get sculpting and zone out and do my thing and let you watch and see what you think. All right, so the first thing we do is just take a sheet of clay, and this clay has all been very well conditioned, and conditioning clay just means that you knead it in your hands, and just, you probably do it for about 30 seconds to a minute, and get it nice and smooth and warm and pliable. And so, then the first step, what I want to do is just try to get some symmetry on this basic head shape, because if you don't start with a good head shape, you're going to be wrestling with it through the whole sculpt process. And a lot of times we don't see the weird parts of the shape until later in. So that just happens, but the more you can learn to see what's out of place in the first place is, is a good deal. So what I'm doing next here is, these are the handmade eyes that we make at the shop. My daughter usually makes them. I do sometimes, but they're so tiny. <laughs> I enjoy her making them more. Anyway, so they usually have this little backing on them um, that just happens from the, the clay just happens from the process of making them and so I like to trim it off sometimes if it's a little bit thick. I had a bunch of foil in this doll and so I didn't have a whole lot of space to push it back into the head so I just trimmed it off. And then I put the eyes in and I try to get them as even as possible and then just put a bunch of these little snakes around the eyes to kind of hold them in. And then I just gently smooth them in. It's kind of funny to watch how quick the movements look when it's sped up like this. This is probably about um, five times as fast as what I usually go. So this whole face, including the ears, it probably took about an hour and a half or so to do. Because they take some time. Usually, even once you get all the features in place, you are often just fiddling around with it for a while. So next, I'm just starting to build up the face a bit, adding in some cheekbones and also filling out the brow just a little bit more on that left side. And now just starting to get some clay in place for the nose. And a little bit more on the forehead so it's a bit more rounded. So as I add each piece, I take a minute and smooth it into place with my tool and often will use my thumbs or whatever else just to kind of get it to all go into place. Here I'm using a ball stylus which is a pretty great tool for around the eyes. But my wooden tool is the, my go-to. That's my favorite sculpting tool and that's what I'm always using just because I, I enjoy how it feels on the clay. The kind of drag it gives and just the way it handles the clay is my favorite. But like a right around the nose and the inner eye, that's a great spot to use your ball stylus for. And you can see I do a lot of smoothing throughout the whole process as well. Usually, one of the hardest things with fairy faces is getting the eyes to sit right. I'm working on some methods to make that be a, a surefire way that I will be able to always get eyes set perfectly because I feel like right now I still am wrestling with them a bit during the process but other than that it's a pretty fun process to make these these faces okay so you can see how I just kind of keep refining a little bit more and more I've got the nose kind of shaped out a bit starting to place in where the nostrils are going to go and I like to use just a tiny ball stylus for that and then often I will add extra pieces to the nose, like that little ball that I added for one of the nostrils, just to make sure we've got plenty of clay to cover all the shapes that we need. And here I'm kind of making some 
adjustment to the eyes, I draw in that eyelid just by using that tool and, and drawing just a little bit above. I just kind of go for where I want the crease of the eyelid to be and then draw in right there. And so then you're left with the eyelid after you draw in the crease. That's kind of how it works. And sometimes I'll even go in with tiny little worms of clay and add in eyelids like that too. So you'll probably see me do that as well. That purple tool that you saw, that's one of my favorites. It's the rubber tip tool. It's got a teeny tiny tip on it. And so it's great for this, just the tiniest areas. And sometimes you need that, that ability. I also use it when I am painting their faces. And I use it when I'm doing the eyebrows especially because if you use Genesis Paint, you can draw in, paint in your eyebrow and then just use that rubber tip tool to kind of draw some lines in it that end up looking like little eyebrow hairs. All right, so here I just added a ball of clay to be the chin, kind of the bottom lip area. And now I'm just kind of filling in the sides a little bit as well. It's kind of just like a hen pecking process of keep adding little adjustments here and there. And again, always smoothing, smoothing constantly. I tend to kind of go all over the place when I work on my faces. It kind of comes together a little bit at a time here and there in kind of more of a roughed state. I kind of rough in all the shapes first before I spend time making them look really good. I've just found too many times if you don't have those basic shapes right in the first place, you'll end up going back and having to change things. So I don't get too refined. I just keep going along and ref working on the whole thing at once. And then towards the end, I'll do a lot more of the refining. So there we just added a bottom lip. It was mostly just a tiny kind of a rice shape piece of clay that I just added on there and then kind of shaped the sides up and I used that black rubber tip tool to kind of poke the corners of the mouth so it indents into the face a little bit more and then I added another piece for the chin. And now again just doing a lot of smoothing on this. Now I'm spending some time working on the eyes. This is a, um, they call this a clay shaper tool and it's got a black rubber end on it, but it's, it's a lot more smooth than that um, purple rubber tip tool. All right, so here I'm just adding in more flesh on that left side so it was starting to look like it was a little bit hollowed in. And since I did that, I needed to fill out the lips a bit more, so I just added more clay. And then I need to do it all the way over to the other side too. So now I'm just kind of filling it out in layers. I often will just kind of add layers like this and then just keep on improving it as it goes. Getting little bits of lint that come along too. That's often a process of sculpting in polymer clay too as you run into a bunch of lint. But if you keep that X-Acto knife nearby and keep a very sharp blade in it, like it, with every doll, if you could have a new blade for it, that would be ideal because when it cuts through on a new blade, it, it does a great job of just getting a tiny layer of clay off that usually has the piece of lint embedded into it. You can see I use this clay shaper tool quite a bit on the lips. I do this also with my ball stylus tool too, where I will actually use it to kind of shape and draw onto the lips too. And then just I kind of keep making the rounds from the eyes to the nose to the mouth. Keep on making improvements and refining the shapes more and more. And then often I will look at it from the top and from the bottom, all directions, so you can see um, if the amount of clay is even on both sides. And in this case, I didn't feel like it was. And so here I am adding in a few more pancakes and then smoothing them in to get the the amount of flesh to be the same on both sides of the doll. Luckily, I already have her torso sculpted and her chest, so once I put the head on, we'll be halfway there with this doll already, and that's, that's a good feeling. 
so nice to complete them. They are a challenge to do. They really are, but it's a fun challenge. And that's very satisfying. So here we go again, just refining those lips a bit more. And now I'm kind of refining around the eye and the temple area. Just kind of getting in there with my tools. There we go with the ball stylus. That's what I was telling you about before that it, it works really great, especially on the corner of the eye on the inside of it. Cause it's just a nice round shape that fits in perfectly right up against the nose like that. So kind of pay attention to your tools and as you use them more and more, you'll get a feel for what you want to be, what kind of tool you want and what it's going to be able to do for you. Just becomes second nature in time. So it's nice to have these videos of people who are sculpting already. And so you can kind of just see what the method is and how many tools they go through. I mean, it's kind of funny. I keep changing up which tool for where, but that's kind of how it is. I usually have probably about five or six tools that are with me. Looks like I've got about four plus my brush. So there's the five right there. I also have that little tiny ball stylus too that I like to use. So now what you see me doing here, this is part of the smoothing process. And usually I try to get most of the features in place first, because once you add this smoothing gel to it, it is going to make the surface a bit sticky. And that's perfect for smoothing because it's going to help it all blend together better. But I like to be very, um, I try to not use very much. Otherwise your, your face can get extremely sticky and then the clay can become hard to work with. So if you use the smoothing gel or the smoothing oil, just think tiny, tiny amounts of it. Less is more in this case for sure. But it's also really nice to have because it just gives such a nice surface, such a nice finish to it. You can see I do a lot with just my fingers. A lot of shaping of the forehead, just shaping of the basic face shapes. The more you can keep your fingers off of it, the better because you'll end up with less lint, but there are times that you do need to get your, your fingers in there. But a lot of this is just my tools that I use. There we go. That was bugging me watching it. I could see that that, <laughs> that eye was missing part of its brow. And so I'm glad that I noticed that and added a little piece. Sometimes when you actually have that doll in front of your face, especially for so long, you it's harder to notice the flaws and the things that need adjustments. So I always recommend when I'm teaching that people take a break, take a good hour, go do something else, even come back the next day sometimes too, and just have some fresh eyes to look at your work with. And then you'll usually see things that you didn't before and it will be easier to make corrections if needed. All right, so now that's one of the ways I'll do an eyelid sometimes. What happened on this doll is they, the two eyelids were two different thicknesses, just the way I happened to sculpt them. So the one side needed a bit more clay added in, so it'd be even again. Here I'm adjusting the brow and temple on this side as well. I often like to kind of press down from above once I get those eyelids looking nice, just so it's kind of more of a a heavy brow look, or it kind of makes the dolls look a little bit more emotional, I guess. And I like that look. I like the dolls to have a lot of emotion going on. All right, so that cute little snake, that was for the bottom eyelid. It's a really easy way to do it. Sometimes I try to just push up the clay from beneath the eyelid because it's just such a tiny amount of clay anyway. But for some reason, it doesn't seem to push up very well all the time. So sometimes it's just easier to take a little tiny worm just like that and just kind of push it right in there. And then any of the excess, I just kind of cut off with my tool. And then I'm getting in there with a tinier stylus just to kind of smooth it in place. So you can see the doll goes through quite a process to get her face to look nice. So especially if you've been working on yours for a while, understand it, it it's still t I've done hundreds of these by this point and it still takes me a good hour and a half to get one of these done such a tiny piece you wouldn't think it would take that long but they do it's just it's such a precise art too especially around the face 
the body is a bit more forgiving, other than the hands. Hands and feet, you gotta be pretty precise there too. But especially on that face, because that's, that's what people see first when they see your doll. It's that face, it's that expression, it's kind of that, that human touch that's kind of coming through, even though it's just a piece of clay that you're just shaping. They end up looking so lifelike, it's amazing. All right, so now what I did is I took a little pea of clay and I flattened it out. And by the way, it's a good idea to grab two peas of clay that are the same size. So you've got the correct amount to use um, for both ears. So it's gonna be the same amount on both sides. Because if you wait until afterwards, it's kind of hard to judge how big that pea size needed to be. So it's good to have both in the first place. And then with a doll this tiny, I like to use the ball stylus to do the ear. And I just kind of get right in there and just start drawing out the ear shapes is basically what I'm doing. And then with the ball stylus, you can kind of press it into the ear itself and it will flatten down the clay that you don't want to be up like in, in the cavity of the ear. So you just put your ball stylus right in there and let it shape it and flatten out the inside of the ear for you. And then I do a lot of just the basic shaping with my wooden tool. And now I'm going in to just kind of get all the fine details, the earlobe, and I think that little flap thing is called a tragus. And I'm getting the, the conch is that hollow area inside. And then over on the, the side there, there's a lot of cartilage. Just kind of makes a cool shape. It's best to have an ear reference to look at when you do this because ears are, they're kind of complicated shapes and it takes a while to get it all memorized what, what they look like. This one I am definitely doing by memory though. <laughs> They're fun to do. Once you've done so many, it gets a lot, a lot easier. So she is almost done. I think I'm gonna be just adding a little bit more to the lips. And then I finished the other ear off camera. But now you can see how she turned out. Today I just had to sculpt a fairy face. So this is how she's coming along. I still need to do some brushwork and such with her and shape the back of her head, but she's turning out pretty cute. I like it. Here's a shot of her. I still need to kind of fix the back of her head and all that, but her face is coming along nice. Just a lot of smoothing and refining on those basic shapes that we did.